Hello and welcome to another Studio 45 online service. I'm so excited that you guys are here. You know, it is the month of July, but we're still doing the big idea, which is fruit of the spirit. You know, we have this theme, make waves, which is making waves in our lives, in our communities, something God is doing, doing inside of us to change the world around us, which is actually our big idea. So repeat this at home with me, fruit of the spirit, something God does inside of you, to change the world around you. And yes, we are continuing this big idea, but with this new month, we have a new memory verse to go with that big idea. So repeat this at home with me. It is out of Philippians. It starts as this. God began a good work in you, and I am sure that he will carry it on until it is completed. That will be on the day Christ Jesus returns. Philippians 1.6. And so today we're gonna be learning about kindness and how we should be kind to others. So check it out. The Bible is more than a single book. It's a collection of 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry written by dozens of different authors over thousands of years that all come together to tell one big story. It's a bigger story than you can even imagine. It's a big story about a really big God and what he did to rescue us. It shows us who we are and what we were created to do. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey everybody and welcome to another exciting episode of Studio 45. We're so glad you could join us. If you've been with us this summer, you know we've been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. And the fruit of the Spirit is something God wants to do in us to change the world around us. In fact, you might recognize that definition because that's how we define a big idea. A big idea is a part of who God is and he wants to put it to work inside of us to change the world around us. And this summer, we've actually been talking about the fruit of the Spirit. It's, it's something that the Holy Spirit produces inside of us and there's a lot of different things that describe it. Like for instance, love or joy. We've talked about peace. We've talked about patience. All of those are aspects of the fruit of the Spirit. And when we see them in our lives, that means that the Holy Spirit is at work in our lives. We've kind of used this as a description. Our theme has been make waves. And today we're, we're talking about how what you do today can change the world around you. It's kind of like waves in an ocean. Or, or if you go to a pond, you know, and you take a rock and you throw it into the pond, you'll see where it lands. But from where it lands, you'll see all the ripples go out from it, right? And that's what it's like when we let the Holy Spirit go to work in our lives, producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, right? I mean, when you are patient with your younger brother or younger sibling, they're more patient with you. And, and when you, when your parents see you being patient with each other, like it, it helps them be more patient. And, and when they're more patient, like your, your, bo your dad's boss at work, he starts being more patient. Like it has this rippling, world-changing effect. And we think that's pretty awesome. Now today, we're kicking off the second month of the summer, July, with the part of the fruit of the Spirit called kindness. You know, in, in Galatians, it talks about how the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, and it's being kind. Now, when we think of being kind, we might think of waving to someone or, or holding a door open for somebody, and that definitely is kind. But the kind of kindness that Jesus talked about, it definitely made waves, and it changed the world. And if we can put it to practice in our lives, it can definitely cause uh, some pretty big things to happen. In fact, I was doing some research this week, and uh, I saw there's this really cool uh, place, I think it's like in Australia, where they have this huge tank of water, and they they can make waves form in this pool. It's really, really amazing to see all the things that they can do. And it's pretty cool to see how it might start off small, but it ends up growing until it's really, really big. And that's what we want to see you guys do. Just because you're a fourth grader or a fifth grader doesn't mean you can't make a difference. We absolutely believe that you can be people that make waves today that, cha that change the world around you. So, as we talk about the story, let me give you some backstory here. We're in the book of Luke, so if you have your Bible, you can follow along if you like. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 10. And uh, Jesus, a lot of times people would follow Jesus around because he would do these amazing miracles. Uh, he fed a lot of people uh, from just a tiny little sack lunch before. He healed people. But one of the things people love to do is they love to hear Jesus teach. And he would teach about what the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven or uh, was like, what God enjoyed and what, what God made 
made God happy. And so one of the people that uh, comes up to Jesus in Luke chapter 10, a lot of the people wanted to hear him speak. But some of the people, in fact, the religious teachers and the Pharisees of those days, they like to kind of come up to Jesus and sometimes like throw him curveball questions, you know, see if they could trip him up. They weren't really huge fans of Jesus, mainly because people wanted to follow Jesus and they felt threatened by it. They felt like they didn't have as much power as they did before. And so uh, Luke tells us in Luke chapter 10, he says, one day an authority on the law stood up to test Jesus. He said, teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus turns the question back on him. He says, well, what's written in the law? How do you understand it? And so the guy answers. He says, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, love him with all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus, is, Jesus knows that this guy is trying to test him. So he says, okay, you've answered correctly. But then the man, listen to how Luke says this. He says, the man wanted to make himself look good. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And with that question, really focusing on that question, who is my neighbor? See, the, 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 the religious leader was trying to trip Jesus up, and he was also trying to make himself look good. Well, well, okay, if you say I should love my neighbor, who is my neighbor? And Jesus starts telling him a story. It's probably a story you've heard before, and maybe a story, even if you haven't heard it before, you've heard some of the words used in it before, because the story is called the Good Samaritan. And Jesus starts answering this question, and who is my neighbor? In fact, he'll actually end up turning it back on the religious leader. So I thought to tell Jesus this story, we'd have a little bit of fun with this, and we'd play a game called the neighboring game. Now, in this game, we are simply looking for who is my neighbor. We're looking to the answer to the question that the religious leader posed Jesus, and to do this game, I'm actually going to need a little bit of help. All right, so as I said, we're going to need some help for our game called the neighboring game. And for this, I've got an awesome contestant up here. This is Isaac. And actually, his brother is going to be helping us out too. Because here on the neighboring game, we're going to ask the question that Jesus got asked himself of who is my neighbor. We're going to ask that question for you, Isaac, since you're in the chair, okay? We're going to have three contestants come on the show. And they could be your neighbor. They could not be your neighbor. That's what we're going to find out, okay? So you're the contestant. Now, in Jesus' story, again, this is a story that Jesus made up to illustrate a point, right? And Jesus starts the story out by talking about a Jewish guy. There's this Jewish guy, he's on the road, he's traveling, and unfortunately, um, some trouble comes his way. So I'm actually going to need you to look on your, work on your look a little bit. So if we could just hold this up. Uh, see, the Jewish guy's walking along on this road, and Jesus says that all of a sudden there's some commotion, there's some fighting, this guy uh, gets robbed, they take his money, they beat him, and they leave this guy, this Jewish guy on the side of the road. Oh, yes, that's very good. You look very, very good. He's got his arm in a sling. He's like leaning back. Oh, man. And so in Jesus' story, he tells a story about this Jewish guy. He gets robbed. And he gets left for dead on the side of the road. And that's when things get interesting because Jesus introduces us to the people that could be the neighbor. Remember, he's going to actually, what's cool about the story is Jesus actually turns the question back around on the people he's telling the story to. He gets asked, who's my neighbor? He ends up telling a story where they have to figure out who the neighbor is. So we're going to do that together. Let's meet our first neighbor uh, for Isaac. Isaac, you doing okay? Of course not. He's been left on the side of the road. Okay, so uh, our first neighbor that comes along is a Pharisee. This is Blake. Everybody, wave hi, Blake. Look good, man. You can wave. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. So this is Blake. Uh, this is your first possible neighbor. Uh, Jesus tells a story about a Pharisee. Now, we kind of miss this because we don't have Pharisees today. But the Pharisees, you look very smart, Blake. He's got, you know, very learned. He's in a library. He's got a long beard. The hard thing with the Pharisees is the Pharisees knew the whole Old Testament backwards and forwards. But Jesus, is used, Jesus uses the Pharisee in a story for a reason. He tells a story about the Pharisee. And as the Pharisee sees the Jewish man on the side of the road, you would think, oh, if anybody's going to help, the guy that knows how to help, the guy who is smart enough and intelligent enough to help, he'll be able to come along and do something about it. But in Jesus' story, he addresses the tension that everybody felt back then. And that was that the Pharisees sort of felt like they were better than everybody. You know, they kind of were snooty, you know, the monocle emoji. Like, I mean, they just seemed like they were better than everybody else. So I got to tell you, Isaac, unfortunately, even though you're still on the side of the road, in Jesus' story in Luke chapter 10, he actually says the Pharisee sees the man, walks to the other side of the road, and keeps 
on walking. He doesn't stop. So give me kind of a better than you look, Blake. And that, there we go. That is our Pharisee. That's our first contestant. But it's time for us to meet our second contestant, okay? In Jesus' story, he says that someone else came along. Someone else starts walking down the road that the man was heard on. And this time, it was a Levite. Uh, can you, you look very good, Blake. Again, this is a wonderful Levi look. He's got this uh, very coiffed mustache and a very nice hat on top. Here's the thing. The Levite were sort of, the Pharisees and the Levites were, could both be religious, but the Levites were uh, expected to be kind of like the religious people of the day. They were, uh, uh, they were part of a special group of people. And so <laughs> when the Levite sees the Jewish person. My guess is as the people are listening to Jesus' story, they think, ah, this is what Jesus is going to do. It's not the intelligent, smart one. It's the, it's the kind, compassionate Levite that will see the man that's on the side of the road and stop to help him. But guess what? The Levite, the Levite ends up crossing to the other side as well. I kind of think maybe he, maybe he saw all the guy messed up and he was sort of grossed out by, oh, he's, he's drooling a little bit. No, oh, he got, looks like he got beat up. Oh, that's not a good, I don't think, I probably shouldn't. I mean, yeah, he seems, but somebody else's problem. I mean, I don't know, Jesus, we don't have all of Jesus' story recorded. We just know that he told the story. But I like to imagine that as people are listening to Jesus tell the story, that's kind of what they're picturing, like this Levite sees He's a Jewish man, crosses to the other side of the road, and keeps on walking. They don't, they, he doesn't stop to help. And then Jesus' story, so that, that's great. Let's, let's see, we've got the Pharisee, we've got the Levite. Go ahead and freeze for me there, Blake. That's great, wonderful, look wonderful. And then it's time for the last name. Before I introduce him, though, you should understand something. This was the Samaritan. Uh, Blake, can you give me your most, like, fearsome look just, yeah, 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 like super, super fearsome because when Jesus said the words Samaritan, my guess is everybody in the audience, or most of the people in the audience, maybe not everybody, but most of the people in the audience probably <gasps> gasped because back then the Samaritan didn't have the same war, like meaning behind it that we hear today. In fact, you've probably heard someone called a good Samaritan before. And what you might not realize is that is actually from this story in Luke chapter 10. But in Jesus's time, Isaac, I mean, if you were one of the people listening to Jesus's story and you heard that a Samaritan was on the road, they probably didn't picture a pirate. I mean, that's kind of a humorous thing to look at. But the truth is they probably thought, oh, great, the Samaritan's going to finish this guy off. Like, and Jesus is going to make the point that the Pharisees and the Levites should have done something. I, I mean, they, they didn't know what was coming. But listen to this. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus flips everything on its head when he says, but a Samaritan came to the place where the man was, and when he saw the man, he felt sorry for him. And so Jesus actually says that he went to him, he poured olive oil and wine on his wounds, and he bandaged him. So he actually like provides first aid to this guy. Can you kind of uh, perk up like you're feeling a little bit better? And I said, yeah. And then he put the man on his own dock. He brought him to an inn, took care of him. And the next day, the Samaritan took out two silver coins, and he gave Gave them to the owner of the inn. Take care of him, he said. When I return, I'll pay you back for any extra spent. So, like, he invests, he invests time, he helps them, he invests his own money. Like, the Samaritan actually sees this guy, and instead of walking along the other side of the road or saying or turning around or saying it was someone else's problem, the Samaritan goes over to the man and helps him. How do you feel now? Can you act like you're feeling a lot better? Yeah, he's feeling a lot better. But Jesus ends this whole story with a question. I love this question because it was the same question he got asked at the beginning. Jesus turns the question, and with these three people, he says, who is the neighbor? For this Jewish guy that was left on the side of the road, was it the Pharisee who all of the Jewish people probably would have looked up, as, up, up to as really intelligent? Was it the Levite who all of the people would have looked up to as like a special kind of person? Or was it the Samaritan who honestly most of the Jewish people probably would have looked down on? And the truth is, the guy that asked the question to begin with, he's left with only one answer, just like you and I are left. If I asked you the question, who was your neighbor, Isaac? It, there was the one that stopped and took care of you and helped you out. It was the 
Samaritan. Okay, can we give it up for our awesome contestants up here? Thanks for playing Who's My Neighbor? That's awesome. Or the neighboring game. I forgot the name of the game. But give it up for Isaac and give it up for Blake. Now, as I said, of course, when the, the religious leader is asked the question, which of the three is the neighbor? I mean, he had to say the Samaritan. But listen to what Jesus says afterwards. And I promise you, this definitely made waves in the people that were watching and the community, and it's still making waves today. He says, Jesus tells him, the authority on the law replies, that the, the neighbor was the one who felt sorry for the man that was on the side of the road. And then listen to what Jesus says. He says, Jesus told him, well, go and do as he did. See, Jesus makes this guy that was trying to test him and trying to look good, he kind of humbles him in a minute where he says, listen, you, you think it's about uh, measuring up and looking better than other people, but it's not that. I mean, the Samaritan in the story probably, I mean, when Jesus is telling the story, imagine the Samaritan helping the Jewish man knowing that as Jesus tells the story, like if the roles were reversed, if the Samaritan man was on the side of the road and the Jewish man was walking by he probably wouldn't have stopped. Like, they just didn't. The Jewish people looked down on the Samaritan people. And so when Jesus tells a story, like, everyone in the audience knows that that culturally, for the Samaritan, for him to stop, it's clear to everybody that if the roles were reversed, this guy would not be helping him out. But it doesn't matter. He still treats him as his neighbor. See, that's the kind of kindness that Jesus was talking about. Jesus was talking about showing kindness to people even if they don't show kindness to you. Jesus was talking about being kind kind to the person that doesn't invite you to their birthday party. Jesus was talking about being kind to the girl that you know has said something about you behind your back. Jesus was talking about being kind no matter what. And and maybe I could put it this way. Jesus was talking about how we need to treat others the way we want to be treated. See, culturally up to that point, you treated others the way they treated you. But Jesus makes ways. He totally flips everything upside down. He says, no, 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 that's not the way you do it. You treat others the way you would want to be treated. And as a Samaritan passes by on the road, he thinks, I know that if it was me, I would want someone to help. So he stops and he helps. And this is what caused the religious leaders so much trouble is they knew that if the, if the shoe was on the other foot, there was a lot of things that they were going to have to give up. There was a lot of things that they were going to have to let go and, and use to help other people. And I think a lot of times that's why they didn't want to follow Jesus. But for us as Jesus followers, if we want to have this, the fruit of the Holy Spirit working inside of us, this is a big deal. It's allowing the Holy Spirit to help us show kindness. So I tell you what. How about this? How about the next time that you find it hard to be kind, ask the Holy Spirit to help you out. Now, when we talk about asking the Holy Spirit, we're not talking about asking God and hoping to hear like an audible voice from heaven, you know, and the angels open up and there's like a beam of light and it's like, hello, I'm God. Like, we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is listening to that still, small voice inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. And he wants to help you show kindness even when it's hard. Because that, that is what looks the most like Jesus. And Jesus, when we look like him, that definitely makes ways and it changes the world around us. Let me pray for you. God, we pray for every student and every parent and every person that's watching this video, that we would be kind to others, even when it's hard, maybe especially when it's hard. And we wouldn't take people for granted. And we would make sure that we show the kind of kindness that Jesus showed to everyone. And it's in his name we pray, amen. That is an awesome story. Thank you so much, Jesse. Now, we have a review game that we're gonna go over. Let's see if you were paying attention. So we have multiple choices. We're gonna have three questions. Let's see what our first question is. All right, that one was a little pretty easy. Let's see if you can get the second one right. All right, now here is the last question. How are you doing so far? All right, here is the last question.
was awesome. How'd you do? Oh, that was great. Well, you know, every single story and every single week, we have a question of the week. So say this at home, reveal the question. And this week's question is, how can you be kind even when it's hard? Talk with whoever you're watching this with, and we'll see you guys next week. See ya.